Hello. Good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hi, Larissa. How are you? Uh, fine, evening. thank you. Okay, good, good. Good evening. Hey, hello, Ceci. How are you today? Fine, teacher. Fine. Okay, that's good. Okay, who else? Here, Gabi, Gabriela, Carlos, Mauricio Perez, Luis Canales, and Godofredo. Okay, good. Good, good night, teacher. Hey, okay, hello, Sara. How are you today? I'm fine. Okay, very good. Nice to, to have you back. How was the vacation at home <laughs> or work in some, in some cases? Was it good? Yes, very good. Okay, in your house or you went out? Sara? In my house. In my house. In your house. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yes. And you, Larissa? Yes, in my house. In your house. And a little uh, work with oh. my classroom. <laughs> okay. You're a teacher? Yes, yes, I am a teacher. Okay. I'm teaching uh, tutorials. Okay, good. Perfect. That's good. Okay, okay. thank you. All right. Uh, Luis, Canales, how was the vacation? Hello, Luis. Okay. Probably he's still having problems with the audio. Okay, good. Uh, well, let's see now. Let's get it started. We have 10 people, but we have to. Continue with this. Okay, this is the last one that we studied last time. I feel the video, right? With I feel homesick. I don't know, probably we're going to watch the video. Just for you too. Can't rush her, she looked terrible. <laughs> oh, it's good. How do you feel? Feel homesick? How are you? Very bad. I have a headache. I have a headache. She has a backache. Pedro feels fine. El Pedro de la, de la cadena, right? <laughs> the same guy. How do you feel? I feel fantastic. What's the matter? Earache. Very good. And then let's see here. Now it's your turn to practice. Give an example to your own. I feel homesick. I feel homesick. We're going to listen just to the conversation for you. I listen into a conversation title. I feel homesick. I feel homesick. Hey, Kenichi, how are you? Oh, I'm not so good, actually. Why? What's the matter? Well, I have a headache and a backache. Maybe you have the flu. No, I think I just feel a little homesick for Japan. That's too bad. But maybe I can help. Let's have lunch at that new Japanese restaurant. That's a great idea. Thanks, Brian. I feel better already. Now let's take a look at the examples of this chart. Have plus noun. Feel plus adjective. What's the matter? What's wrong? I have a headache. I have a backache. I have the flu. How are you? How do you feel? I feel homesick. I feel better. I don't feel well. Negative adjectives. Sick. Awful. Terrible. Miserable. Positive adjectives. Fine, great, terrific, fantastic. I would like to start by explaining the examples on the left-hand side of this chart. How to form statements with 
path plus noun. We can follow this formula to do that. Sub plus half plus um, no. Let's analyze the first example. I have a headache. Let's the major. Then we need to put path. Finally, we include a noun. A headache. Let's take a look at one more example. I have the flu. The subject is I. Then we need to put have. Finally, we include the noun. Now, I would like to show you how to form statements with feel plus adjective. We can follow this formula. Subject plus feel plus adjective. Let's analyze the example. I feel homesick. The subject is I. Then we need to add feel. Finally, we need to put an adjective. Homesick. Or it can be any of these adjectives towards the right. I feel sick, awful, terrible, miserable, fine, great, terrific, fantastic. Now it's your turn to practice giving examples of your own. Try to use the vocabulary and try to make examples using have plus noun and feel plus adjective. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, just something that you already did. And then uh, we're going to have Another practice, remember all this vocabulary because we are going to use it in the next exercise. For example here. Okay, uh, Gabriela Aguirre, would you please read the instructions here? Okay. Um, listen to the conversation. Uh, where do, do these people hurt? Uh, they may they may be one or two correct answer for each each conversation. Very good. Each, each. conversation. Each conversation. Para cada, right? Okay. Now you're going to listen to these conversations here, and then we have to determine what the pro uh, what Ben's problem is, right? There could be one or two possible answers, right? So he has some problems with his body and he's going to say what the problems are. And then here we have conversation two. Allison, you can see that she's having a big problem now. She's falling down, you know, the stairs, right? So then, and also we can see here, Jeffrey is, you know, touching or holding his cheek and he has an ice cream here. And then we also have Marta, right? Marta has a problem too. And we have to determine if it is one or two problems. Okay, now listen. Okay, it's gonna take like 20 seconds, I guess. Yeah. Okay, while well, that happens, we can go and see. Okay, when you listen at the end, so you can tell me which is the problem that Ben has. Where do these people hurt? I think I'm gonna go home early. I don't feel well. What's the matter, Ben? 
I think I have a cold, I have a headache, and I have a sore throat. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, what's the problem with Ben? Uh, Anybody can answer, huh? Um, head and throat, throat. Okay, he has a headache. Headache. And a throat. Sore, sore throat. Sore throat. Uh -huh. Sore throat. Okay. Okay, two problems. Now let's sore see. Throat. Yeah, sore throat. Now let's see, Allison. Feel better. Two. Ow! Oh my gosh, are you okay, Allison? Uh, not really. My back and my elbow feel terrible. Ouch! Can you stand up? I think so. Yeah, thanks for your help. Three. Here, have some... Okay. What's the problem with uh, Alison? Uh, back oh. and elbow. Ah, the back hurts and the elbow too. The elbow. So she's falling on the back and the elbow. Okay. Oh? Yeah. Thanks for your help. Three. Three. Here, have some ice cream, Jeffrey. Oh, I love ice cream, but I can't eat any cold food. Why not? I have a really bad toothache. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the problem? Four. Ugh. Oh. What's wrong? I have really sore eyes, and my wrists are sore too. Well, take a break, Marta. Finish typing your homework later. Okay. What's the eyes? The eyes. Sore, sore eyes. Eyes. And the wrist. The wrist. And the wrist. And the wrist. Okay. Now let's submit it and see. La primera so teacher. We have a ten, right? So we have a ten. So we can see that Ben. Had a headache and a sore throat. Hey, and then, um, then we have hey, Allison had a backache and a sore elbow. Hey, we have a toothache. Uh, Jeffrey has a toothache. And Marta has a wrist. And eyes, they are sore. Okay, they have a pain in the wrist and a pain in the eyes. Okay. Okay, did you no questions? Um, no. No. Okay, good. Now we're going to because this is vocabulary, we're going to use it in an, in the next exercise that we're going to have after the next video. Okay. Uh, Carlos Gomez, would you please read this lesson objective here? By the end of this uh, class, you will learn. Learn is the Yes, learn. Learn the names of kind of medical medicate heal medicate heal problem for health problems. Okay. So for example, this is, you know, what are some of the medicines that, or medications uh -huh, that we take when we have some problems. Bro. Okay. Oh. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn the names of common medications for health problems. Let's listen and practice. Common medications. Antacid, muscle cream, aspirin, cough syrup, cough drops, 
Cold pills. Eye drops. Now, I would like for you to describe what you take whenever you have a headache. Antacid. Problems. Let's listen and practice. Common medications. Antacid. So we have antacid, right? This is, you know, when we have some uh, heart pumps, uh, and they say the, and then we have the muscle cream. Muscle cream. Muscle cream. Aspirin. Aspirin. Cough syrup. Cough syrup. Cough drops. Cough drops. Cold pills. Cold pills. Okay, so we have antacid, muscle, muscle cream, aspirin, cough syrup, cough drops, and cold pills. Eye drops. And the eye drops. Now, I would like for you to describe what you take whenever you have a headache. For example, whenever I have a headache, I take aspirin. Whenever I have a cold, I take... Give as many examples as you can. Look at the vocabulary from our previous lesson and describe what you take for each illness. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, like this one. Whenever I have a headache, I take a septaminophen, right? Whenever I have a stomach ache, I take the mold. Whenever I have a toothache, I take pill and bring four all of them, right? There's another one to not to mouthwash, okay, to keep your mouth clean. Okay, good. Then uh, we have whenever I have a pain in the throat, a sore throat, uh -huh, or a pain in the throat, I take three metropine, right? Whenever I have an uncle, uncle pain, I take Tylenol. Well, Tylenol is the one I didn't, I didn't remember. Okay, good. Now, for example, you can also use expressions like whenever I feel, okay, whenever I feel sick, what do you do? You can use the phrase whenever I feel sick, whenever I feel terrible, whenever I feel great, whenever I have a toothache, whenever I have a headache. Okay, what do you do? For example, whenever I have a headache, I take aspirin and sleep. Okay, so what do you do when you feel something? Try to use any vocabulary, I mean, all the vocabulary that you know, that you remember from the previous lesson. Uh, invent sentences, create, okay? Uh, one volunteer. I need a volunteer. When I, whenever I have a stomach, stomach I take a stomach I take antiacid. Antacid, right? Yes. Okay, good. And then uh, whenever I have a sensation in my stomach, I drink water or eat something. Okay? So sometimes you have this uh, kind of sensations, right? That, but you don't know if it is because you are thirsty or because you are hungry, right? So then you eat something. Okay, what else? Whenever I am tired, I take a rest. Okay, whenever I feel happy, I play with my daughter. Okay, what else? Whenever I feel sad, whenever I feel great, Whenever. whenever whenever I have toothache, I take aspirin. Aspirin, okay, very good. Right. What else? 
Um, whenever I feel sick, I go to the doctor. Okay, whenever I got, I feel sick, I go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Very recommendable. Okay, good. What else, what else? Whenever I have the flu, mm -hmm. I take Palagrip. I take Palagrip, okay. <gasps> good, good. What else? Fine, go ahead, don't be, don't be shy. Now this is the time to practice. You wrote some sentences, now you can, you know, do it in an actual way. Whenever I have a co, mm -hmm. I take a, a stamina thing. Okay, good. I take a And I drink tea. And I drink tea, okay. Whenever I have a flu, I drink lots of liquids. Okay, lots of liquids, water, lemonade, tea, uh, hot drink, chocolate, right? What else? Whenever I have a stomach case, mm -hmm. I take Lansoprazole. <laughs> okay, I don't know what it is, but is it good? Is it good, little fellow? Uh, is it a good medicine? Um, es buena, la medicina es buena. Es, sí, sí. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Excellent. What else? Another one. Don't be shy, don't be shy. You can say, for example, whenever I have the opportunity to speak English, I practice. I speak a lot, okay, whenever I have the chance. What is another sentence? Okay, Sylvia, do you have one? Okay. Whenever I have a flu, I drink a tea. I drink a tea, yes. Good. Okay, tea with the lemon, right? Very hot. Good. Rocio? Whenever I feel fine, I paint. Okay, okay. You see, there's another positive one, right? Whenever I feel fine, I paint. Okay, good. So you're an artist. Good. Uh, one more, Roger. Roger, are you there? Um, yes, uh, teacher. Okay. Uh, whenever I muscle hurt, I take Panadol multisymptom. Oh, okay, multisymptoms. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, whenever my muscle hurt, I take... My muscle hurt. Uh -huh. uh, Panadol multisymptoms, right? Yes. Okay. Very good. Excellent. So you see, these are the ones, I mean, you can use this uh, phrase, uh, whenever you feel, whenever I have, whenever I am, okay, whenever I am hungry, okay, whenever I am hungry, I eat. Whenever I am sleepy, I go to bed. Whenever I am, uh, uh, let's say, whenever I feel uh, terrific, I go out with my family. Whenever I have money, I take my uh, children, uh, or I, I, I buy pizza for my children, okay? So you can use this, you know, in many different ways. Whenever I do this, whenever, whenever, okay? Whenever I get paid, cuando me pagan, right? I buy something for me, okay? Or whenever I get paid, I save money, okay? Not only in this context, you can use whenever I feel, whenever I have, whenever, in different situations, okay, situations. Questions at this moment about this? No. No questions. Okay, very good. Okay, so then let's go back to the platform. And okay. see. 
this part that says, okay, here. Uh, Ceci, Ceci Diaz, can you please read this sub lesson objective here? Sorry, teacher. Yes, can you please read this objective? Okay, by the end of this class, you will learn how to use positive and negative imperatives. Additional, we additionally, you will also practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in real life setting. Okay, good. So then, uh, I guess that you remember the imperatives, right? Imperatives, depending on how we say things, you know, can be an order, can be a command, can be a suggestion, or it could be a, an instruction, okay? For example, when you go to the doctor, because you have a problem with your heart, what does the doctor say? What does the, do the doctor recommend? Que, que se haga un electrocardiograma. Okay. Take, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then you say, for example, take an electrocardiogram, right? So that could okay. be one. That could be take is the imperative. Another action that doctors recommend, they say, for example, don't eat too much. Okay. Uh, what else do they say? Uh, do exercise. Okay. What is another recommendation? Uh, don't, don't, don't work too much. Okay. What else? What else? What else? What is another recommendation? Yes, Mauricio? Uh, no. Um, yeah, don't stay up late. Don't stay up late. Uh -huh. Don't uh -huh. up late. Don't stay up late. Yes, that's oh. a recommendation, right? Sleep. That means sleep enough. Rest. Okay? So, all these are, you know, uh, imperatives, are words, are verbs, actions. That uh, for example, people recommend or suggest. A teacher say, for example, an English teacher can tell you, practice your English all the time. Is practice your English, it's imperative. Uh, uh, repeat the pronunciation of these words. Repeat is, a, is the imperative. Uh, another action is, for example, write sentences, please. Write sentences is another a suggestion or recommendation that the teacher is giving. Okay, now listen to this video. Listen to this video is another a instruction or recommendation. Hi everyone. In this class, you learn how to use positive and negative imperatives. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, Don't Work Too Hard. Let's listen and practice. Don't work too hard. Hello, Ms. West. How are you today? Not so good. So what's wrong exactly? I'm exhausted. Hmm. Why are you so tired? I don't know. I just can't sleep at night. Okay, let's take a look at you. I'm going to give you some pills. Take one pill every night after dinner. Okay. And don't drink coffee, tea, or soda. Anything else? Yes. Don't work too hard. All right. Thanks, Dr. Young. The conversation that we just heard illustrates the conversation between a doctor and a patient. Typically, whenever we are sick and we go to the doctor, 
we're going to receive instructions from the doctor so that we can get better. We use imperatives to give instructions. Imperatives. Take a pill every four hours. Rest in bed. Drink lots of juice. Don't work too hard. Don't stay up late. Don't drink soda. To form imperatives is very simple. Just add the verb. No subject is necessary. Then a complement. On the left hand side of the chart, we can see positive imperatives. Let's analyze them. Take a pill every four hours. The verb is take. The complement is a pill every four hours. On the right hand side of the chart, you can see negative imperatives. Don't work too hard. In this case, we're going to follow this next formula. Don't plus verb plus complement. Don't work is the verb and the complement too hard. Now, I would like for you to give some examples of your own. Think of the advice or instructions that you or your doctor gives whenever you have some kind of illness. For example, if you have a cold, take cough syrup, don't drink cold drinks. After you finish this task, share your work in our discussion forums. that you or your doctor gives whenever okay so here you can see the, the examples right of the of the verbs that we can well we can use any verb right so we can use many verbs but if you see the, the sentence begin, begins with take take a pill every four hours like an instruction rest in bed you know, giving instructions drink lots of juice okay but also you can use them in negative the sentence is negative but the result what you expect is something positive right it's something good for you don't work too hard that's good for you and for your health for your body don't stay up late okay so i mean so sleep eight hours okay sleep the time that you need don't drink soda okay don't drink soda Whenever you have some kind of illness and then for example if you have a cold take cough syrup okay and these are some of the suggestions right don't work too hard don't study too much if you feel sick okay if you feel sick okay if you are sick don't study too much today then rest in bed go to bed go to sleep okay so all these verbs are the ones that you can use any questions people hmm? preguntas teacher. yes teacher. Um, y en terceras personas, si ¿sí tendríamos que poner has. Mm, you know, usually, eh, la, eh, the instructions are for you. Let's say in this case, right, the imperative. Now, if you're using a third person, for example, if she has a cold, uh, for example, in that one is she shouldn't. I just utiliza el should. Uh, suppose that my, let's say, my friend is, uh, let's say my friend has a cold. Okay, then, ¿cuál sería la sugerencia? She should. Ella debería. She should do this, right? This ones, the don't, van directamente de la primera a la segunda persona. Right? Okay. Ahora, si usted quiere ser tercera persona, si se puede decir, if she has a cold, if she has a cold, if your friend has a cold, 
she should, ella debería. Porque ya no le estoy diciendo a ella algo imperativo, sino que le estoy dando una sugerencia de lo que ella debería hacer. And that would be, let me check what I'm going to put right here. Here. She should uh, stay in bed. Okay. If she has a call, okay. If she has a call, she should stay in there. Eso ya sería para una tercera persona. Si ella tiene un refrío, que ella debería quedarse en la cama. But, for example, if you have a call, Stay in bed. Okay? Don't do that again. If you have a call, stay in bed. If you feel bad, don't go out. If you feel, uh, if you feel, uh, let's say, um, if you are still, if you are still, si aún, if you are still sick, uh, go to the doctor. Go to the hospital. Okay? Entonces, de primera, de, del doctor o de la persona que da la recomendación a la segunda persona que puede ser usted o ustedes en el grupo. Ok, por ejemplo, if I say, a teacher, if you have a question, ask me. Si tienen preguntas, pregunten. Right? If you have a question, ask me. Ok. Entonces, uh, alguien dice, ah, este, yo creo que Sara tiene preguntas. Ok. If she has a question, well, She should ask me. Ella debería preguntar. Ok. Clear? Not clear? Yes, sir. Ok, no problem. Ok, but remember that in this case is you give the instruction, I mean in this case to the second person. Ok, like in this one, say if you have a muscle pain, Take a muscle cream, okay, and don't make sudden movements, right? Then say put on. Instead of the take, you say put on. If you have allergies, take pills and put creams on the, on the affected areas. Okay, don't sleep too late. Don't drink a coffee so much. Drink lots of water. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> don't be bad. Okay, if you have a back pain, You are, uh, let's say you take, take, okay, estos son los uh, imperatives, and then you don't need to use do. You take uh, analgesic, and if you have cough, take cough syrup. If you have flu, take antibiotics. Okay, good. Okay, we have this one. One more practice before we do our own. Okay, complete the sentences, use the words in the box. Can you read them here? Can you see them? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because sometimes the boxes yes, are... Teacher. Very small. Okay, good. Now let's see, Larissa. Can you please tell me the number one? Uh, the choices, the options, which one? Stay a dentist, don't drink a dentist, call a dentist, take a dentist, don't worry a dentist, don't eat a dentist, don't go a dentist, see a dentist. Eh, sería, sí, a dentes. Sí, a dentes. Okay. No sería call. It could be. Could be a call. Could be a call. Could be call. Al, al final vemos las answers, right? No problem. This okay. Okay. Roger. Yes. Which is your option here? 
And number two. Yeah, uh, don't drink. Don't worry. Don't worry too much. No, don't worry. Don't worry too much. Okay. About number three, uh, Rocio. Take. Take. Two aspirin. Okay. About number four, Carlos Gomez. Um, es, es la de la escuela la cuatro, ¿verdad? Yes, sir. Number four. I don't. Es, don't go, creo que es. Don't go. Okay. Good. Uh, Roger. Odinora. Number number five. Yes. Uh, stay in bed. Which one? Stay. Stay. Uh huh. Stay, stay in bed. bed. Okay. Stay in bed. Good. Jennifer, number six. Hi, Celia. Um. Call a doctor. Call a doctor. Okay. Eh, Luis, Luis Canales. Don't drink. Don't drink. Don't drink. Don't drink. Right. Esther Marroquín, number eight. <laughs> Don't eat. Don't eat. eat. Don't eat candy. Okay, let's see the answers. So we have, okay, here is call a dentist. O sea, tiene sentido, sí, no hay problema de decir a dentist. But here, llama al dentista. Okay, then, it's okay. Okay. Don't go. Yes. <laughs> Stay. Again, yeah, the doctor is. See. See si. si a doctor. And then. Don't drink. Don't drink. The same. Don't eat. And don't, don't eat. eat. Right? And now we have. Dos salieron mal. <laughs> Attend. Two. That's okay. No problem. Not bad. No bad. Like sea and cold, right? Sea and cold. Pero es que las dos tienen sentido. No era. Hey. Okay. All right, good. Now, questions about this vocabulary. So this is vocabulary. No? Ahora, si ven acá, todos estos son verbos. Call, stay, see, pay. Don't go, don't drink. Things. Worry, drink, eat. That son los verbos los que utilizamos como imperatives. Que son como, mm. dependiendo de cómo te digan las cosas, pueden ser órdenes o sugerencias, ¿ok? Si usted le dice a su hijo, uh -huh. sit down and be quiet, ¿qué está haciendo? Dándole una orden que se siente y se calle. Exacto, ¿verdad? Entonces, depende de cómo se diga, ¿ok? Hey, sit down and be quiet. Pero si un teacher le dice a un alumno, ok, uh, sit down, please, ¿es una orden o no? Sí. Sí. Yes. Sí. Yes. Can you say, be quiet? Be quiet. Yes. yes. If I say, yes. first of all, turn yes. off. Okay, guys, please, okay. Uh, please turn on your cameras. Yes. Suggestion. Or please turn on, turn on your microphones. Okay. So it can be, for example, uh, uh, this is, for example, depending on the tone, it can sound like an order can sound you know like a suggestion right i recommend you say for example it's a recommendation too so depending on the tone if you use the word please la palabra please siempre va como a, a suavizar la, la frase okay okay please uh please be quiet right come on out hey estoy pidiendo right por favor callate, callate. <laughs> uh -huh, but no but depends you say hey please be quiet 
D en that sense, ya es el, el tono que lleva, así, mira, ahí sí lo como se Ajá. Como se dice, por favor, cállate. Right? So it sounds, you see, I say, please, be quiet. Okay, I say, hey, come on, guys. No, hey, a person, okay, guys, please be quiet because we're going to start the class. Al inicio es un llamado general, right? Okay? Mm -hmm. But after that, they say, when you go more specific, hey, you say, Johnny, please be quiet. This is the second time. Okay, yes, como una orden. Entonces, yeah. Yes? Eh, disculpe, cuando usted dice guys, ¿se refiere a solo el sexo masculino o, o en general? Cuando usted dice guys. lo que acaba de decir, guys. Uh -huh. Guys, sí, por lo general se usa en, o sea, se usa en general. No es, este, ajá, no es tan este, específico como solo para hombres. ¿no? Hey, guys. Ah, ok. Ajá. Hay una, eh, hay una palabra, no sé si... ¿Ven esta ventana ahorita? No. Sí, sí, sí. Sí. Goals, okay. sí. Yeah. Okay, goals. Ok, esta es la otra para... A veces, esta es la que se ocupa a veces para mujeres. Goals. Go. Uh -huh. Means girls, girls means girls. It's just girls, it's the standard version of the word girls. Uh -huh. Okay. Pero esta no es, no es muy común que la usen, ¿no? And then, sí. usa más el guy. Pero esa es la otra palabra que, que existe para usar girls, para guys. ¿no? It's more common to say, come on guys, in general, right, in the class. Okay, you guys, ready? Okay, let's say, you guys ready? Then, es como decimos en español, eh, los estudiantes o los jóvenes. Ajá, como Todos el, los estudiantes. En todos los estudiantes o todos los jóvenes, por ejemplo. Digamos que en... Lo que pasa es que ahora, como ah, acordémonos que como ahora, eh, lamentablemente, pues o sea, están, eh, ¿cómo se llama? L las jóvenes, los el jóvenes. Género, o sea, el género, ajá. Ajá, el género. En, sí, mire, pero... en inglés hasta ahorita no se, no hay mucho de eso por la cuestión del mismo idioma. El artículo es de... Ok, the boys and the girls, o sea, the boys, o sea, tienen su palabra. Okay. Cada entonces, eh, eh, por, y cuando se dice, por ejemplo, dice, ok, chicos, ok, entonces dice, ok, guys, es algo así. Uh -huh. más, ya, ajá, algo así sí, más, sí. más ya la, okay. la forma en, en inglés, ok, come on, guys. Ahora es que, hey, guys and girls, eso puede ser, ok, ya, be more específico. Mm. But you can say, in general, no problem. Ok, chicos, vamos a continuar. Ok, guys, let's continue. Que es la más común que usamos en español, but chicos. Ok. Good. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, so then, uh, no more questions about this. And remember, the other one is don't and pay. Ok, don't pay. Don't call. I mean, this is, can be affirmative or it can be negative. Ok. Don't. Okay, we're going to see this one. Mauricio Perez, would you please read? This is less an objective here, please. <laughs> By the end. Okay. Uh, by the end of the class, you will read and discuss an article about how to improve your health. Additionally, you will uh, develop develop skill in scanning and reading for main ideas. Okay, good. So read and discuss an article. Okay, we're gonna read this one. Let's see here. Yes. Hi everyone, in this class you'll develop skills in scanning and reading for main ideas. By reading and discussing an article about how to improve your health. 10 simple ways to improve your health. Believe it or not, you can greatly improve your health in 10 simple ways. 1. Eat breakfast. Breakfast gives you energy for the morning. 2. Go for a walk. Walking is good exercise, and exercise is necessary for good health. 
Three, floss your teeth. Don't just brush them. Flossing keeps your gums healthy. Four, drink eight cups of water every day. Water helps your body in many ways. <coughs> five, stretch for five minutes. Stretching is important for your muscles. Six, wear a seat belt. Every year, seat belts save thousands of lives. Seven, do something to challenge your brain. For example, do a crossword puzzle or read a new book. Eight, protect your skin. Use lots of moisturizer and sunscreen. Nine, get enough calcium. Your bones need it. Dairy foods like yogurt, milk, and cheese have calcium. Ten, take a time out, a break of about twenty minutes. Do something different. For example, get up and walk. Or sit down and listen to music. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll develop skills in scanning and reading for main ideas by reading and discussing an article about how to improve your health. Ten simple ways to improve your health. Believe it or not, you can greatly improve your health in ten simple ways. Okay. Mr. Nelson, now listen to the number one and after you read, okay? But first, listen. One, eat breakfast. Breakfast gives you energy for the morning. Okay, Mr. Nelson. Number one. Eat breakfast. Mm-hmm. Breakfast. Breakfast. Games. Gives you. <laughs> no. No. I can't hear. Okay, Kevin, can you read number one? Yes. Eat breakfast. Breakfast gives you energy for the morning. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Uh, now we have a uh, procedure. Number two. Two. Go for a walk. Walking is good exercise, and exercise is necessary for good health. Okay. Ever see? No. I see you. Have you ever seen? Mauricio Larcon, can you read number two? Me teacher. Okay. Okay. Uh, go for a walk. Walking is good exercise and necessary is necessary for good health. 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 Eh, luego de good, no sé qué, no, no veo good. muy bien qué palabra. Good health. Health. No, eh, walking is good. Después no, no alcanzo a leer. Exercise. Ah. Exercise, say walking is good exercise, and exercise is necessary. Ah, okay. Ah, exercise are the two words that are there. Uh-huh. I'm not going to read Okay, very good. It's for good health. Thank you, Rocio. Okay, uh, number three. Listen. Three, floss your teeth. Don't just brush them. Flossing keeps your gums healthy. Four. Okay, that's all right. Close uh, your teeth. Don't just brush them. Flossing keep your keep your gums healthy. Healthy. Very good. Excellent. Alfredo Lopez, 
It's number four. Four. Drink eight cups of water every day. Water helps your body in many ways. All right. Drink eight cups of water every day. Water helps your body in many no, no many ways. In many ways. ways. In many ways. Okay, good. Now, a uh, Mauricio Alarcón. Number five. five. Stretch for five minutes. Stretching is important for your muscles. Okay. Five. Stretch for five minutes. Stretching is important for your muscle. muscles. 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 Yes, that's correct. Esther Marroquin, number six. Six. Wear a seatbelt. Every year, seatbelts save thousands of lives. Okay, Esther. Wear a seatbelt. Every year, seatbelts save thousands of lives. Of lives. Okay, thank you. Okay, Sara, number seven. Seven. Do something to challenge your brain. For example, do a crossword puzzle or read a new book. Eight, pretend. Okay. Do something to ch challenge your brain. For example, do a crossword puzzle or read a new book. Or read a new book. Okay, very good. Uh, let me see. Godofredo. Godofredo, ready or ready now. Godofredo, number eight. Eight. Protect your skin. Use lots of moisturizer and sunscreen. Eight. Protect your skin. Use lots of moisturizer and sunscreen. And sunscreen. Sunscreen. Yes. Ceci Diaz, number nine. Nine, get enough calcium. Your bones need it. Dairy foods like yogurt, milk, and cheese have calcium. Ten, get enough, cal mm -hmm. get enough calcium. Your bones need, need it. Dairy food like yogurt, milk, and cheese have calcium. Very good, nice. Okay, Mauricio Perez, number 10. Take a time out, a break of about 20 minutes. Do something different. For example, get up and walk, or sit down and listen to music. Get up and walk. Okay, number 10. Uh, uh, take a uh, time out, a uh, break of about, about 20 minutes. Do something different. For example, uh, get up and walk, or sit down and listen to music. Okay, Teacher, tiene apagado el micrófono, creo. Y no se le escucha aquí. No, no se escucha, teacher. ¿Y ahora? Ahora sí. Yes, okay. Good. Ahora sí, yes. Okay. Yes. Then it was there. Yes. Now it was there. There your phones. Okay, good. Uh -huh. Any questions about the vocabulary? No problem with the vocabulary? No, it's, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, very good. Okay, then uh, here says to improve my health, I always go to walk at 5 a.m. every morning. Excellent. 
This is a great sentence. Okay, so then uh, tomorrow we're gonna do this knowledge check about the reading, okay? Practice it, and tomorrow we're going to start with this. Eh, para esta semana tenemos ya, vamos avanzando, vamos a terminar la, unidad, la sección 3. Y hay que hacer el midterm, ok? Entonces ya pueden ir empezando a hacerlo. Por si tienen preguntas, el jueves podemos resolver algunas dudas que tengan para el examen. Ok? Ok, teacher. All right. Very good. Ok, so, teacher. Excellent. So, tomorrow, we're going to stop here for today. And we will continue tomorrow. Ok? Have a good night. Good night, teacher. Tomorrow. Good night. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Bye.